Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Clark's Farm. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, it all helps. Um, this week, well last week as you know it was Gavin Stag, um, so we were all the way to Prague for the weekend. So he got my brother-in-law Chris there to feed up and chat the cattle and all for us. So he did do a bit of a clip while he was doing it, quite funny. So uh, I'm just going to show you that he's here now. Also, uh, I'm going to show you is I'll we'll have to take our calves in, the rest of our calves, and dose them and um, to get them ready for putting them in the house. And we have a new venture that we're going to discuss with you. Um, but yeah, I'll show you this clip here. Chris feeding the cows yesterday it was quite funny. Or last week, sorry. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of Clark's Farm with your one and only host, Farmer Chris. Best farmer this side of the west. Right, let's see, what have to do here? Look at these gap shades here, look. Look at this. Oh wow. Well. i get back to it anyway. Good luck. Yeah, so, big thanks to Chris for doing that for us anyway. It was much appreciated. Um, yeah, that's it. So, um, just gonna tell you about something that we have been looking into. Spoiler alert, it's Cal Tranker. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> it's not even a calf drinker, it's a calf feeder. Well, people are going to think it's the calf meal feeder. So it's a calf. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, from, uh, we looked at it at the plow and we looked at it a few different machines, the calf feeders. Um, <coughs> so, we're still just making a final decision on it, but in the next week or two, we are going to be getting calves in and we have been talking to a few farmers stuff about buying freezing calves in. Um, we had a nutritionist here the day talking with different milk uh, replacers and stuff. And we, we talked to Q out of Markins Animal Feeds, and he says, Look, he'll send the nutritionist up to us. So, I don't even know where, what, what company is the nutritionist from? I can't remember, he told us yesterday, I can't even think. If you're watching, because I don't know what, <laughs> what company I've um, But yeah, so he uh, he came up and he told us about different the different types of micro place there is and um, about the different levels of skimmed and stuff like that. So um, two different types of skimmed and whey, wasn't it? Skimmed and whey, that's right. Um, so it's a new venture for us, really. Da did feed, f take freezing cows in years ago and fed them, just bucket fed them and we were talking about doing it and he says look it's not that we weren't fit to do it it's you need to be religiously on time feeding them at the same time every day and with family and obviously the two of us running two different businesses and gary away running a business in the dock we could never guarantee that we could feed them on time every time every day you can't commit to that so that's why we said we'd go down the feeder route and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna to have to change a few things about in the shed. Um, we also have a guy come to look about, um, to see about ventilation in the shed, to see if we need to change anything for that. We are hoping to sort of have around 20, 30 calves to start off with and see how it goes. Um, we're gonna put them down in the bottom end of the shed here. I think the plan is, I think we're gonna put the take this gate away here, feed by away here. Machine, put machine's gonna be here. Yeah, put the machine in here and then put a gate down here. Yeah. Um one station back there and another station back there it's there something in there. I think that's what we're gonna do. Um that's it. There's all the ventilated tin down here and the roof has the hole in the roof. Um <laughs> I did see as a killing bros, they have on their calf shed, the bottom of their tin is out a foot from the wall. So that might be something we could do. Kick it out so that like it's carrying the wind up and out. Yeah, as your man says, uh, wind, uh, ventilation like that is a natural, natural, what do you call it? He says it was for carrying 
Diseases away. Diseases away. Yeah. That's what he says. Like, the draft's no good. You need to be taking, need to be circulating the air. That's what it was. Um, so, the first thing he's going to do, to, obviously, empty these pans out. We're going to have to be all power washed out and then line goes to have it. Then, um, we put straw bales along the back to keep the cars away from the concrete. Yeah, so, well, that's right, yeah. Because so concrete wall, keep them, well, it will. Laying on concrete yourself, it's, it's, they're even walking on concrete, they're cold all the time, like your feet be colder. So the idea is keep the cows away from the concrete and up off the ground. We'll have plenty of bedding anyways, regardless, but keep them against the, away from that back wall, keep them warmer. Then <coughs> um, what else is there? Well, we, talk, we talked about... Um, Different minerals and stuff. I've heard people giving additive minerals to calves stuff as well. So I was talking to, to him about that, and he says, "Look, if you're getting a high enough quality milk replacer, you shouldn't need to give minerals as an additive." Um, so what he was talking about was the whey milk against the skim milk. Um, the skim is basically better. The skim is supposed to be better. He, he does a the top end of his milk was fifth. The I think fifty-two pound a bag, and the lower end of the scale is the thirty-eight pound a bag. Um, so it's just a matter of deciding what road we want to go with that. Um, but yeah, so we have to wash all this out anyway, and see what we're going to do then after that. Um, one of the main reasons, obviously, can't explain that. The main reason we went for the feeder was because of time. We don't have an abundance of it, but. Um, there's a few other benefits to it over the bucket fade. Um, one being you can see exactly what the cow is drinking, or how much it's drinking, or how, how often, or what time it is drinking it. That'll allow us to see if a calf, if a calf is not feeding routinely, then there's something up, there's something causing him not to, not not to do it. And if he's not drinking as much as he should be, again. It's early signs of an illness or something, and if you, uh, especially in a batch of twenty calves, if you want to see, if you see a calves getting sick, you want to pull it out, get it fixed before it spread to any other calves for a start. Whereas if you're bucket fed, feeding that as much as you you like, you you have to basically stand and stare at the calves until they're finished feeding, and that's just not practical. Um, Having said that, your man yeah, this morning, he did. He sort of preferred the bucket fed. It's not that he said he preferred the bucket fed. He just says that you could, you could do as much bucket feeding as you could with the machine, and you would save a lot of money, obviously buying the machine. But he did agree. Then once he's seen the scenario that we're in, obviously with the plant hire and the graphics and stuff, he says you're not always readily available you know it's not as if you're milking cows in the morning and going to be able to yeah. feed cows you're we've the business that you'd be called away out a call out i could be called away for different something happened or machine breakdown anything anything that happened and obviously you have to go to your work first your work, yeah. work comes first um so that's and consistency as well is with the, with the machine whenever the cab wants to drink it can drink whereas with your buckets, it's either fed in the mornings or the evenings, or well, both probably normally. Like, but if a calf wants to drink at eight o'clock in the evening, it can roll up to the feeder as long as it's due the feed, it can drink whatever it likes. Like, so basically, what I'm saying is the, the feeder is a lot like the cow. Whenever a calf wants to feed, it can walk up to the cow and start drinking, whereas when you're buck feeding, them, you can't. Um, he was explaining this morning the benefit of that is when you're weaning them off <coughs> it's like the shock of like they get eight I think up to eight liters isn't it yeah eight liters per calf a day and it'll get reduced down to five and the calf will be sort of shocked but by that stage it'll already be at least nosing around the meal thinking or eating a wee bit of it anyways so the shock of getting less milk the first thing he's going to do is go over to the mail and start eating it. So it's not, it's less stress in the calf, but it, 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 gives, it gives an enticement to, 
to go feed the meal. Um, so, as I was saying, we have looked at a few different feeders. If anybody out there has any advice for us going into this, I said we are fairly green. Obviously, we know a lot about calves and cows and stuff and, and cows, but if there's any advice or tips or anything, please just drop in the comments below. If you have a machine that you prefer or you think it's a better machine for us to look at or to buy, let us know. Um, obviously, we want, we're going into this and we are investing a lot of money into it, so we want to invest wisely. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, touch wood, it should all come into place in the next few weeks and should all go well. All come well. So, today's mission, um, we're taking the rest of our cows and calves in now. All the way, of course, we have to top them out. Um, taking them in, we're going to uh, dose the calves from pneumonia to get them ready to put them in the shed and take out the cows that need scanned. I'm going to take them over back to Flagstaff. Uh, so it's handy because the bike coming on a Tuesday to scan them. And take out the cows that's closest to Calvin. Obviously it's a few months away yet. But the cows that's closest to Calvin, I'll put them. I'm going to put them in the mountain over closest to Flagstaff as well. Just leave the whole thing handier for us whenever the time comes. But yeah, not going to be handy with this job today. So there's not. Yeah, so fun times. I tell you, I think you're doing a great thing. More in the water, for example. See the thing you get to the top. He's just regretting them. He's way hard to walk. Batch of cows is content, but I don't want to leave the field out. He's just slow on his feet. He got his feet done last week too. Press the big farmer again, lo. Let's get out of it. Saying hello, Dahi. No. <laughs> Shay. So, we get all the cows down in the crush, and of course, we are one missing. So, instead of going up around the mountain again, look around, I'm just going to throw the drone up here. See the drone there? Man. That's the joys of the drone and having cattle on the mountain. Very handy for that. So, thankfully I was able to find the one on the mountain. And got him down as well. Um, yeah, so, we're going to take the calves in now and dose them. Um, it's only a two mil dose up the nose. Um, so, we'll try and get the calves down in the crush here now. So, we're just going to show you what we're doing here. So what Gavin's doing here is he's injecting straight up the nose, he's two mil, he waits for the in breath before he pumps it in. So calf will sniff it in. Personally, not a big fan of this. I think it's a disaster. But it's what we got, so that's what we walk with. What's the number? Yeah, sorry. 6016. Oh, 
So, um, that's the dosing all done, thankfully. Was not straightforward, but this is the batch of cows that were emptying calf. I'm gonna scan these on Tuesday now, see how they are. If they're still not in calf, they will not be ours. Let them go. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna throw these in the trailer here now and take them back home. And how can yeah. you tell Gavin was driving the trailer last? Got her absolutely buried too. Yes, that's that's the aftermath down there. I don't know what sort of tires you're gonna need to put on that jeep by. Tracks, right? Yeah, that's it. Hard luck. I see you. Go on, up, up. Let's go on. Well, they're out to do. They're all on. Plenty of room there for them. It's just they weren't sitting right in the trailer. So, um, yeah, we'll get the shit to buy home here now. Run them straight through then. I So, we'll just um, put these at the back field here. Um, so when it comes to shoes then, we'll just be able to walk them in and hand you done. Um, oh. Right guys, unfortunately that is all we have time for this week. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, it all helps the channel. Um, are you saying bye bye? Adios amigo! <laughs> yeah, so uh, don't forget also, we have new video out every Sunday. And check out the website for our merch. Um, yeah, that's it for all of us. 
Ha det best. Gøy nok. Vet du det?